it is Saturday morning and I was actually invited by a, a dealer locally uh, that is going to have a booth at an upcoming con. I was invited by him to check out his private storage this morning of comics that he is you know going to be bringing to the con and then books that might not ever make it to the con. Uh, but I've decided not to go and I've decided not to go uh, after after a fair amount of like internal debate, right? Um, and I decided not to go because I have a goal for my collection for 2020. And I am trying to, as best I can, hold myself to that goal. And to that point, it requires me to resist temptation, right? And the temptation is, if I go to this storage facility, I will buy something. There is no doubt about that. And so to uh, resist the temptation, to resist uh, spending money on things that don't necessarily fall in line with my goals, I am opting not to go. It's not an easy decision. It's never an easy decision to, to pass on an opportunity. But I think it behooves me to do so because the goals that I've set for myself, for my collection, are meaningful goals. And so therefore, I am going to hold myself to uh, what it is that I've decided uh, to do, which is not not to go. Uh, I am, however, going to uh, be productive. I'm going to be productive. I'm actually going to head out uh, to the Home Depot, uh, one of my favorite stores. One of my favorite stores. I'm going to head out to the Home Depot and I'm going to buy some Rust-Oleum. <laughs> <laughs> I am going to buy spray paint uh, because I have a home improvement project that I started uh, recently and uh, I need to complete it. Uh, it's basically that that fence that you see behind me uh, needs to uh, to have some some upgrades made to it, some some upkeep done to it. And it it doesn't start with rust oleum, but it definitely includes rust oleum. So uh, off to Home Depot, I go. If you were wondering if this whole video was going to be about my Home Depot trip and this project, no, it is not going to be just about that. We are going to hit a comic shop as well. So stay tuned for the video. Fortunately or unfortunately, it looks like the rain is actually going to hold off. So I'm actually going to try to uh, to knock out a part of this project right now. Um, what I'm doing is actually uh, knocking down some sharp points on this fence. Uh, because the kids occasionally play out here, uh, these metal ends to the fence are, are somewhat sharp. And I have a fear that they're actually going to cut their hands on them. Some of these things are a little rusty, uh, so I want to try to knock it down, make them smoother, make it safer, uh, not just for the kids, but even for, uh, you know, workers that I have come or UPS men that have to go in and out of the fence. I just want to make it uh, a little safer for everybody. So and then painting is to prevent the metal fence from basically rusting out. So uh, we're going to get to it. I have my handy dandy uh, grinder here. So I'm going to go ahead and knock this thing out. So like right here, you can actually see just how sharp these little uh, these little barbs are. And it's basically where the two pieces of metal have been uh, placed together and then they basically fold it over one side and it just creates these really sharp edges right here that I'm hoping to, uh, again, grind down. I've actually done the process for one part of the gate already and, uh, and you know, ground it down and also spray painted it. It actually looks really, really nice. And now I just have to do uh, all of the other fence that's out here.
I'm going to take this opportunity right now to sneak out of the house and to go hit up a local comic shop to pick up some books for my pull list. Uh, I finished painting a significant portion of the fence. There is still a lot more to be done. It probably will not be done today, uh, but I'm going to run to a comic shop real quick, do a couple of things, and then I need to get back here because we have two rounds of soccer tonight. So I have to take probably both kids uh, at different times to go to soccer. And so this is the moment that I have right now. So we are going to go hit up Crush Comics in Castro Valley and see what kind of trouble we can get into. So I'm back in the comic book room and ready to show you guys some of the books that I picked up a little bit earlier today. And you definitely want to stay tuned for the end of this video because I have a little something that I'll be showing you that you might be interested in. With that, let's take a look at the books that I picked up. Uh, one of them is a pretty cool book that I've been talking a lot about as of late because it was recently optioned, I believe, by Netflix. And issue number one was fantastic. I was super pumped uh, and excited that issue two was finally out. I have not yet read it, but I am definitely looking forward to reading Philadelphia. This is issue number two. Kind of a strange cover for this one, especially after issue number one. Uh, but I guess when you have, you know, creator-owned uh, books that are being released, they have the freedom to be creative. But this one definitely, in my opinion, is not in the spirit of issue number one. Uh, but I'm hoping that the story and the interior artwork are just as good as issue uh, number one. Next up is uh, two, two books. Uh, I've been reading this series. I've been enjoying this series. I think that I just bought a second copy of this one accidentally. This is issue number two of Morbius. And again, it's a it's a series that I'm reading kind of in the, the spirit of Philadelphia. Uh, but I think I bought issue number two twice. But here is issue number three of Morbius. Definitely a cool cover. I think there was like a variant or two of this one that I passed on. Thought the, the cover A was more than enough. Here is issue number five of Marauders. And uh, as you guys know, I was aiming for buying issues one through five of all of the new X titles. Here is issue number five of the New Mutants. And uh, I have to tell you, as I look at these various issues five of more of uh, Excalibur and reflect upon the stories that have been told or are being told across these books, 
They are honestly fantastic. This is a really cool cover. This is issue number five of X-Force. I have not read this one, but these are um, some of the weapons that I guess Forge has been working on using uh, Krakoa's uh, bio-organic material combined with technology, uh, that is really cool. Forge is one of those really, really cool X-Men characters that, in my opinion, is underutilized, uh, underappreciated, uh, but here he is on the cover of X-Force looking pretty tough, and there appears to be some kind of uh, Krakoan battle suit in the background behind him, so... Uh, this is probably going to be a dope issue. I'm looking forward to reading that. Here is issue uh, number five of The Fallen Angels. And uh, I'm honestly thinking about keeping all five or all six of the the X-related titles on my pull list because I honestly am enjoying them. Some of them have been better than others. Uh, but I'm honestly, as a, as a collective, I am enjoying them and I want to continue supporting uh, what it is that uh, Marvel is attempting to do with mutants. And those six issues or those six books, those six titles are a huge part of that. Uh, this is a book, I kind of picked this one up because it was cover price. My guy had put it in my bin. He thought I might be interested in it. I haven't heard anyone, no one, zero people have been talking about in the coming and this is i think he said it might have been like a one or two per store variant um it, again it was cover price so i was like whatever uh it's a massive book i mean this thing has to be 80 pages and uh marvel of course in their traditional fashion uh decided to treat it like a regular comic book and there are some bindery tears at the top of this instead of doing it the right way with the square bound they did as a regular comic and um you know, same results, right? You would hope that they would uh, learn from their mistakes, like Magneto said to humanity in X-Men number five. Uh, video coming soon if it hasn't already been released. Um, this is a really cool title. This is a really cool title that I have enjoyed. Uh, and I just realized that I didn't get the A cover. Just realized I didn't get A cover, but I did get two copies of of Thor number one. This is uh, one of the variants and I uh, just realized that this was not the A cover, uh, but it is a really, really cool um, variant cover of, of Thor number one. Uh, I'm digging this. I'm digging this series. I'm looking forward to seeing where the series is actually going to go. So that's the regular variant. And then here is a one per store variant for Thor number one. And again, huge shout out to uh, to Crush Comics for always taking care of me. Uh, they put this one aside for me and gave me an opportunity to uh, to pick it up. And uh, it's a really, really nice book. I never know whether these one or two per store variants are actually going to do anything. So it's like, yeah, it is what it is. My guy doesn't charge a crazy amount of money. So little support for him. Maybe I get a really cool book that's kind of uh, limited in some respect. Here is issue uh, number four of X-Men, and I guess I was off. I think I said it. this was issue five. This is actually issue four. Wonderful, wonderful uh, issue featuring some fantastically powerful dialogue between Magneto and humanity. Um, this is a classic. This is a classic bad guy front and center kind of story, man. If you haven't read this, I definitely encourage you to read uh, X-Men number four, because it's dope. Uh, I've heard a lot about this series and I haven't, or, or this story, I've heard a lot about it, have not read it, uh, but anything that involves my good friend, uh, Mark Bagley, he's not my friend, but I, I like to think of him as, as my friend, uh, Mark Bagley, uh, and I go way back. We go way back. <laughs> this is uh, Venom Island, Venom number uh, 21, and this is part one of this story, which I think kind of sort of goes back to some um, ASM titles or ASM um, story arc that Bagley worked on back in the day when Venom went to this island. He kidnapped Spider-Man. He thought that he had killed Spider-Man and he was basically living on the island, that being Eddie Brock and Venom, living on the island in like, you know, uh, happiness and thinking that they had killed finally their arch enemy only to realize that they hadn't killed him. Uh, this, this story arc here um, actually harkens back to that. And I can't remember what issues there are, but I'm sure you guys can figure it out. Here is uh, Venom Island Part 
2. This is uh, Venom number 22. Another cool cover right there of him hanging out on the island. Here is uh, Amazing Spider-Man number 37. Um, continuing to buy these because I am a Spider-Man fan. And then the very last book that I'm actually going to show you uh, is this really, really wonderful book right here. Uh, this is Immortal Hulk number 29. So there you go. That is essentially uh, my haul. But as I mentioned, I wanted to give you an opportunity to see something and to not just see it, but to actually get it, to actually have an opportunity to win a really, really cool slab. And it's an Amazing Spider-Man slab. Uh, I haven't done an Amazing Spider-Man slab in a very, very long time, but this is Amazing Spider-Man number 72. This is an appearance of the Shocker, and it is a 9.0, a really nice sub 100 Amazing Spider-Man uh, that is a 9.0. And this book could be yours as part of this week's Go Collect giveaway. If you are interested in this book, if you're interested in adding this to your collection, uh, all you have to do is head over to the community tab. On the community tab, there will be a post where I'm talking about the giveaway for this week. You click the link and there will be a blue link, I think, that you click. You go to MailChimp and you basically plug in three pieces of information. Two pieces are relevant to you and there is one piece that is a phrase that I'll give you in just a moment. You plug that in, you hit the submit button, you are now in the running. But you have to be a resident of the United States a resident of Canada or have a mailing address in the US to be eligible. And I'm actually doing this week's Go Collect giveaway slightly differently. There will be two winners this week. There will be the person that wins the actual Go Collect giveaway sponsored by Go Collect, that being this book right here. But if you happen to land in second place, I'm also going to give you a pretty cool. Uh, prize pack from my man comic collection agency aka Juan. He hooked me up with a really cool Deadpool package that I have unfortunately left off to the side where I cannot reach it uh, and and if I were to reach it it would make this video incredibly awkward. So rest assured that there is an awesome prize pack that I will probably show you uh, as part of the upcoming Ready, Set, Go preview show, I will break it down. I think there's like a DVD, there's an action figure, there's probably some, some cards and maybe even a comic in there as well. But if you are in second place, you will get that really cool prize pack for Deadpool and the first place winner gets the Go Collect giveaway. So uh, there you go. Those are essentially the details and the phrase. The phrase that you need to plug in is water. Let's go with water, W-A-T-E-R, water, because shocker, electricity, bad combination, I don't know, I'm making it up on the fly. So the phrase for this week's Go Collect giveaway is water, W-A-T-E-R. When you enter the contest, please don't enter anything else other than the actual phrase that I'm looking for. And I know people like to say, Reggie, hey, I love the content. Keep up the good work. I know you guys like to put those types of comments in there, but it makes it a little more difficult for me to very quickly work through scrubbing the data. And so if you can just limit your comment to the phrase, I would absolutely appreciate it. If you want to send me a message, however, to, to say you like the content or don't like the content or whatever it happens to be, you can always do that on Instagram, uh, which is my preferred method of communication. You can reach me at Reggie Collects. If you want to send me an email, you can do that as well. And you can reach me at Reggie at ReggieCollects.com. So I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. I want to wish everyone good luck in this week's giveaway because it's a pretty cool book. I think it actually might be a higher grade than my own book, but whatever. Um, good luck to everybody. And if you enjoyed this video, I definitely want to encourage you to give the video a thumbs up. Uh, if you haven't yet subscribed, you definitely want to subscribe because you have to be a subscriber to actually win the contest that I do here on the channel. So make sure that you do that and leave a comment behind so we can mix it up in the comment section. Take care.